Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. In today's video, we're looking at the top 10 most expensive cards from Kaldheim. Starting off the list at number 10, we have Mystic Reflection, a 2 CMC blue instant that allows you to create a copy of the creature of your choice. And as you can see appearing on the screen now, there are so many good creatures you could use Mystic Reflection on. Imagine another Avenger of Zendikar, imagine another Dockside Extortionist. I've already personally seen this go off with Agent of Treachery and let me tell you, that did not end well for me. Mystic Reflection also has that foretell mechanic which I think is just awesome. Get it down early, then whack it down when you see fit. A wicked card that seems to have leveled out around the $5 mark. Will it go down? Only time will tell. And have you seen its card number? Nice. Before we get on to number 9, don't forget to show your support by smashing that like button and make sure you're subscribed for all things MTG. Remember that as soon as we hit 500 subs, we're cracking that Urza saga, so expect to see that in the coming weeks. Next on the list we have Turgrid, God of Fright. This new menace-loving god is all about that discard and sacrifice. Whacking cards like Smallpox and Dark Deal force your opponents to discard cards and then guess what? Get all those cards from the graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Grab those cards like Waste Not and Siphon Mind, really gain even more from those discards by creating more creatures for yourself and drawing more cards. Lastly, in black there are just an abundance of creature cards that ETB and force your opponents to discard cards, so make sure you're whacking all of those in there and soon your opponents will have nothing on their board, nothing in their hand, nothing in their graveyard and you'll be singing right at the top of that tower. What does that even mean? Next up, it's back-to-back -back god action as we have Halvar, god of battle. Creatures you control that are enchanted or equipped have double strike, so obviously this Halvar deck is going to be filled with enchantments and equipments. Get out all those creatures like Shram and Danitha that are all pro equipment. Cards like Leonin Shikari and Sigardi's Aid are essential here. Get those options onto the field and flash and equip those equipments at any point. Imagine flashing in a Colossus Hammer and giving your opponent a 10-10 to be scared of. Absolutely huge. Again, with a never-ending option of enchantment and equipment out there, it will be so easy to make a deck around Halvar. Halvar is a really easy option for Commander that if you equip a load of equipment onto him, in no time he'll be dealing that double strike damage and your opponents will be dead in no time at all. Time to go copy crazy because next we have Orvar, the All Form. Orvar is a 3-3 changeling that loves to copy your creatures by way of instants or sorceries. Firstly, you want to have out those creatures that you want to create copies of, so make sure you have plenty of those on the field. In MTG, there are a ridiculous amount of one-drop blue instants and sorceries that you can use to target your creatures and then trigger Orvar to create a copy of it. I've already experienced a friend of mine's deck who managed to create an insane amount of Agent of Treachery cards and I did just not last long in that game at all. And if you want to be extra cheeky, getting all those cards like Sakashima of a Thousand Faces and other cards that will give you even more copies of those cards. A really good commander option that I'd definitely recommend building a deck around one one day. For the next most valuable Kaldheim card we have Tyvar Kel. One of the only planeswalkers on this list and you bet he loves those elves. Instantly this screams a perfect card to be in the 99 of a Lathril deck. Tyvar can create your elves, strengthen your elves or if you get to its ultimate you get an emblem that hastes your elves and draws you two cards which is huge. So obviously every single one of those elvish cards would fit in with Tyvar and as you can see there are a butt ton in magic. With so many elves out there, it just begs one question. Why are there not more Marma sets? As I've said in previous videos, if you're going elf tribal, then get in all those utility artifacts that are going to boost your elves even more. Tyvar is a wicked, wicked card and one I wish was able to be a commander because I'd just love to build a deck around him. Next on the list, we have Koma, Cosmos Serpent. As seen on the most recent game nights, this serpent can absolutely kick off big time. Get in all those standard quick rampy plays because you want comb out as quick as possible. Then create all those coils on every upkeep, sack those coils and just cause chaos and get the win. 
I have seen decks online with Koma focusing really hard on Sakashima of a thousand faces just so you can get a copy of Koma and then have all those other cloning cards to have an army of Komas and overwhelm your opponents with all of those tentacles. With Koma being a serpent, you also have those one-sided board wipe and attack stopping options which just make a Koma deck even stronger. A card I packed in my first Kaltheim box opening and one is definitely getting added to my list of commanders I'd love to make a deck around one day. Just missing out on the top three we have a Seeker, God of the Sea. Another cool god creature and one that can make endless five colour deck hijinks. Maybe you want to go god tribal and include all the newest gods from Cal Time, then a Seeker is just perfect for you. Maybe you want to stack your deck with legendary creatures so you have an endless source of growing mana. Again, a Seeker is just perfect for you too. What really takes a Seeker to the next level is the DFC back option. Once a turn on your upkeep, you get to put out a creature or a planeswalker for free. So sneak in all of those Nicol Bolas cards you've got lying around and cross your fingers that you can cheat him out. It's such a flexible card that really does have endless possibilities. Do I put a secret on my list as well? Mm, my list is starting to get a bit too big. For the next most valuable Carl Time card, we have Gold Span Dragon. A card that's seeing a very slow but steady increase in price and you can just see why. A flying haste 4-4 that creates treasure tokens that you can sacrifice for double mana just offers so much value. It's non-legendary too, so if again you're a fan of those cloning cards, then you can really break Goldspan Dragon. Imagine this on the board with a rags to riches. Oh, your opponents are going to be in such trouble. If you've got a deck with Magda as commander, you better believe you'll be searching for Goldspan very soon out of the gate. A card that, like I said, provides so much value, I really can see it finding a home in any commander decks that have red in them. And the second most expensive card from Carl Time is Valky, God of Lies. A card balancing around the $25 mark and slowly seeming to stabilize around that value. Mr. Exile himself is the king of potential shenanigans for a game of magic. If you're casting him as Tybalt, you're instantly getting an emblem, which is something you usually reserve for a Planeswalker's ultimate ability. You might as well fill your deck with creature removal, board wipes and other friendship destroying cards because with Valky slash Tybalt you're going to be focusing on exiling your opponent's cards and then casting those cards for fun because who doesn't love to be a villain? This is the definition of a card I'd hate to be used against me but one I'd absolutely love to use. But hey, I did pack the awesome showcase version in a previous video so maybe I'll sneak it into a deck of mine one day. And of course, number one is Vorinclex Monstrous Raider, a card that has passed its peak of $50, but after a few weeks of release is showing a steady hold at the $35 range. First off, can you believe this card has the same CMC as Colossal Dreadmore? With Vorinclex, due to its ability, we're going one of two ways, plus one counters or infect. If we're feeling dirty, then of course we're adding all of those infect cards, which Green absolutely loves. A card like Phyrexian Swarmlord will be right at home here. Give double infect and then slowly create that little infect army. Of course, if you don't want to be targeted immediately at the commander table, then maybe you want to go the plus one plus one route instead of infect. Again, as you can see now, green just has the stupidest amount of cards that are pro plus one plus one or proliferate. So before long, all your creatures are gonna be filthy strong. With all those ways to proliferate, we're not getting all those big beefy planeswalkers and then get them towards their ultimate abilities in no time at all. An absolutely insanely powerful and valuable card and one I'm sure we'll do a deck tech on one day in the not so distant future. There we have it, that is the list. Thank you for watching and remember there's just a few days left for the giveaway over our Instagram so check that out and keep tuned for the Bergy deck tech that we've got hitting the channel in the next few days. Don't forget to smash that like button and why not subscribe for all things MTG? Check out our link tree in the description below for all our social media and affiliate links. And lastly, why not watch that video in the corner that YouTube's recommending? Go on, check it out. It is an absolute banger. For now though, I am all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.